Howdy folks, Doc here with Last Best Tool. I've got a little bonus video here because Olight's having a summer sale and I thought I'd show you a couple of their products that they're releasing, um, kind of gadgets, um, really going after that EDC space. It's kind of neat, they are demonstrating, you know, that, that lean towards a lifestyle. Um, turn on some light here. Love my little Olight lantern. Um, oh, and I'll do a quick update. I really like the Parrot knife. I've been carrying it for quite a while. Let me get a little more light here so you can see things clearly. And uh, you can see the wear on the micarta, the wear on the belt or the, the clip here. Um, but it's just a, a fun, handy knife. Feel fun to deploy. Um, good solid knife. It's been holding the edge fairly well and I haven't really messed up the, the, the finish, whatever that is on this, which kind of surprised me from the stuff I've been doing. Uh, but anyway, let's get on to the new stuff. First of all, uh, they have entered, I don't know I, what this space is called, the beam space or something. I mean, there are a couple other lights like this. There's a, um, you know, Surefire makes one. I think they call the stiletto. And then there's a, the wedge by, sure, or by uh, Streamlight. Um, basically, it's more of a blocky rectangular shape. Does two things, though. It's got a light and it's got a laser. And you activate or you, uh, you select with this button here. So the light kicks on there. If you hold it down, you can cycle through the three main settings. So what you're looking at is 360 and 15 lumens is what this cycle is. It also, if I turn it off and then hold the button down, will kick on its one lumen. This is good for eight days, apparently. Uh, with the other 15 lumen, good for about 41 hours. So there's plenty of light in this, even though it's fairly small. And then um, if I double click it, I can go to the full 1000 lumens. It's got a shorter runtime um, and a fairly big beam spread. So you aren't going to see some massive, um, you know, light up on a hillside somewhere, although it does claim a range of about 100 meters. Um, this is just, it's a good, bright, um, immediate area light, you know, what you'd want in an EDC light. And the laser here is a powerful green laser. You see that there? Um, it's actually got an excellent beam, very round there. Doesn't have any real strange artifacts and uh, um, it kicks on and off um, with the button. One thing I noticed, if I switch back and forth, it does stay active. And I did wonder if Somebody might accidentally turn the green laser on. I was glad they did green instead of red. Green has some other opportunities for uh, use that red doesn't. Um, green works better. Uh, it's more um, easy to pick out by the human eye. Human eyes are really sensitive to green. And if I point this up in the sky, um, the green interacts with water molecules in the air. So the water vapor kind of glows, which gives it sort of that light, lightsaber look. So if you're pointing at something in the night sky, doing astronomy or whatever, um, the green works really well. And it fires through, um, you know, uh, light better. It's easier to see in a lit room. But anyway, also something kind of neat. If you look at this little set of four buttons or, or four, four marks there, that is the battery. So let me turn it to a lower setting here. If you look at this, it's really kind of neat how they've got that operating. So I'm going to turn it off. And then it counts down slow. Turn it on. Counts up. They didn't have to program this to make that nice, gentle, you know, lack of light, you know, as it goes down, counts down. Um, it just shows that they're interested in kind of innovating kind of making you feel good about the product. Uh, smooth aluminum. Um, this particular one um, is 4,000 to 5,000 K, somewhere in there. They make a couple. Here's the box that it came in. You can order it at point of purchase, uh, depending where you are, either in cool white or in neutral white. So you can see the difference there. Cool white's a little, little higher Kelvin. Um, and it came in in the blue. Uh, in this case as well. So I'm assuming there's going to be a bunch of colors. The price on this guy right uh, during the sale is going to be about $67, uh, which comes in uh, below both the Streamlight and, well, <laughs> like a third of the Surefire. Uh, but anyway, there you can see the specs, IPX67, one meter drop, uh, etc. Um, they did maintain their um, 
their magnetic charging. This is something I wondered about because uh, this seems like an obvious place where you may want to use a USB-C um, because it, they're, the charging port, front, they're discovering the same thing as computers, charging port's actually the widest part on this whole thing. But by having that also, you do have the ability to both, you know, attach it to something magnetic or that's, um, that's uh, ferrous there. And um, that's kind of interesting. Left, to, oh, I guess that's good. something on the bottom of this, probably from because I've been carrying it. Um, and you can do the tail standing there, where some of these beam lights you can't because there just isn't enough real estate to balance. Um, another thing with this the uh, is the name. It's the Arkfeld. Um, so it's kind of moving away from some of the more cryptic names that Olight uses. Um, beautiful little design. Once you have kind of moved out of the sort of traditional battery shape, you know, the lighting, like we found with laptop computers, once you start building, building it around or building the form you want and then finding the battery to fit in it, um, it's going to open up some new lighting space. I like this. Uh, one other thing, I did notice the clip, a uh, little slippery. Um, I'll talk about that with another one of the releases, but um, it's, uh, it holds it in, uh, say, to a pocket just fine, but there's a lot of slide there, and it would be nice for maybe if it was a touch deeper. I like deeper carry things, so you can see that there's that bump that sticks up, but it makes deploying it way easy. Um, next thing um, is the O-Tackle. And all this is, is a basic utility knife. It's got a G10 handle, um, metal frame on one side. It uses a, uh, a kind of a standard shaped um, utility blade, except it has to have the holes in it and they're available there because there are many knives that, that use that kind of a design. Um, has a uh, small slotted screwdriver here, quarter inch wrench there and a bottle opener. Um, this thing is going to come in on the sale right now for about 15 bucks, which puts it right in the ballpark with a lot of other similar ones. It's got good feel, melted features, um, no pocket clip, but maybe you don't need one with something like this. And of course you could throw a lanyard on that. Um, has two stops. And if you look at that, just where that, that blade breaks, uh, this would be great for opening boxes, less chance of puncturing what's inside, um, slicing, you know, right down the 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 um, line right here uh, to take it apart you unscrew this there's a screw it's a solid design it's been around for a while um, and i assume this one's blue i don't know how many colors it'll come in but probably quite a few hopefully um, but that's their entry into the the kind of the utility knife space with the o tackle and tackle i think that's how you pronounce it um, if you look at that, the O tackle, tackle essentially means, you know, that you take on a task or you, you know, like in, you know, a ball game or something, you bring somebody down. But um, I think that's what they mean by the tackle. It's tackling a job or taking on a job. And then, of course, they came out with another. Here's a, a little thing from the box of it, and I'll show you it in a sec. And I thought, okay, I've seen things like this. So, you know, there it is. And I thought, well, I've got, you know, a night eyes one, you know, kind of similar form factor. Maybe I'll tilt that so you can see that a little bit better. Um, or maybe it's the, the bright light. Um, there we go. So you can see what's going on here. I don't know if that helps or not, because my camera keeps adjusting. So anyway, I had a, uh, here's a 511 Tactical, about the same size. And I thought, eh, you know, this, they're just too small to be real good pry bars. They're too thin. Um, but we'll see. Here's one of my, one that I like. It's a titanium. I think Charade made this one. Um, and then, you know, people like all these kind of multi-tool thin profile things. Um, but we all, all kind of want a pry bar. And there's something where it's sort of dialing in on this design, as you see, you know, sort of how that kind of mimics it. Um, However, I was quite surprised when I opened the uh, the box. Look at that monster. They did it right. I mean, it just absolutely dwarfs these others. Um, sure, you can get, get... This is getting into a real pry bar side. Look at the thickness of that compared to the 511. And why that's important is both be, 
because you need the strength, you know, especially when I first saw this too, I was worried about the weakness of these two shoulders here. Uh, I'm not worried at all there. There's a ton of steel there. If it breaks, you know, something else is going to break like your thumb too. Um, basically, it's a, a well thought out design, very smooth, nice uh, finish on this thing. This gray version does have a um, pocket clip with some texture on the side. Now that's what I'm wondering if that would be maybe a way, maybe Olight could explore the possibility of some enhancements on, on pocket clips. Um, this has a, a 10 millimeter, or, or excuse me, not 10, a quarter inch on the back here. And then down here, this runs from 10 millimeter down to five millimeter. So that's how this, this wrench would work, probably in this side here to keep it flush. It's got a copper inlay. I think that's strictly for appearance. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. It's got some jimping here, a bottle opener. It's got a metric ruler across this side, which also acts as a nice little bit of texture there. Um, not, not jimping, but it's actually functional. And so maybe jimping should actually be, begin to have another, um, another function besides just indentations. Maybe we could use them for some sort of measurements. Um, anyway, this is a solid pry bar, this O-Tackle 2. Um, and this is going to be about 32 bucks on sale, which to me is a screaming deal compared to some of these others, um, which, you know, start to add up. And they're considerably less functional. They're very small, but then small isn't always the purpose. It's function in a small package. And it came with a lanyard, so I might keep that on because I don't have a whole lot of quarter inch stuff that I'd be doing with this. So came with a paracord lanyard. Anyway, those are the three things that Olight's uh, releasing today. And um, I, I'm impressed again. Uh, this, I like how they're going in a new space and I've carried this around a bunch. Um, and actually uh, the more I play with it, you know, I, they're onto something. And then this just, they, they nailed it. I mean, I can see um, where they spent the time trying to figure out how to get a pry bar into a small package. You know, the slopes, the angles, the melting, the machining, you know, compared to, you know, almost stamped steel that everybody else has seen. That one still has the metal, or the tool marks on it. Um, yet the prices aren't terribly different. So just well done, Olight. Anyway, bring those to your attention. And with that, Doc out.